All right, well, welcome to the reorg meeting um, for the town board of town of Phillipstown, January 6, 2022. Happy New Year to everybody, and uh, welcome our new member to the town board, Megan Cotter. I'm waving to you, but <laughs> <laughs> and, and welcome our town attorney this evening, Stephen Gabba. Uh, happy New Year to everyone, and uh, we'll get right into it, Tara. So the first item on the agenda is a resolution needed naming M&T Bank of Cold Spring as the designate, designated bank in which all town officers shall deposit monies for the town of Phillipstown. Okay, can I get a motion to a resolution needed naming M&T Bank for the bank for the town of Phillipstown? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Aye. I do not. I can... Get rid of it though. Nope, that's okay. Next on the agenda is a resolution needed authorizing the supervisor to deposit town funds in one or more now accounts, money market accounts, and or certificates of deposit, providing that deposits allow monies to be available or come due in a timely manner to permit the town to meet its financial obligations. I am not reading through that entire thing. <laughs> Motion on the resolution, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution needed compensating for the use of automobiles in the performance of official duties at the rate of 56 cents per mile. Motion on the resolution? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution scheduling the town board monthly meeting be held at 7.30 p.m. at the Town Hall, 238 Main Street, Cold Spring, New York, or 107 Glencliff Drive in Garrison, New York, on the first Thursday of each month, except when the same falls upon a legal holiday or due to extenuating circumstances, in which case the regular monthly meeting shall be held, shall be held upon the following Thursday or such day <clears throat> as shall be determined by the town board at the regular meeting preceding such legal holiday. Okay, motion on the resolution for the meetings. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. We're tearing it up. Tara. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to pay attention to Zoom and this at the same time. <laughs> Resolution, uh, next is a resolution declaring that items for the regular town board agenda must be submitted no later than the Friday preceding the first Thursday okay. of the month. As you can tell, this is a little bit of a hot item for Tara. Yes. So um, we'll, just... we'll do our best to stick with that, Tara, I promise. Yeah, so message is received, Tara. <laughs> Motion on the resolution, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution authorizing the town board to hold monthly meetings at various locations in the town. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Aye. Second then. All in favor? <laughs> aye. Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution that the town board may meet every Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. <clears throat> at the Town Hall, 238 Main Street, Cold Spring, New York, or 107 Glencliff Drive in Garrison to discuss and act upon such business as may come before the board. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Aye. We'll second that. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. If anybody's questioning, 107 Glencliff Road is the recreation Sorry, center, yeah. just to clarify that. <laughs> Next is a resolution designating the, the Putnam County News and Recorder as the town's paper of record and simultaneously some legal notices and similar items of information will be sent to the Highlands Current. Motion on the resolution for advertising. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing O'Connor Davies LLC as the town auditors at an amount not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. Motion on the resolution for our auditors, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution naming Superva Supervisor Van Tassel to act as budget officer for the town of Phillipstown at a salary not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. On the on the resolution, <laughs> sorry, I was just reading. Like All in favor? Aye. Uh, and I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Susan Kenny as the assistant budget officer at a salary not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution authorizing Supervisor Van Tassel to appoint Susan Kenny as comptroller at a salary not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. I'm not sure what we would do without Susan Kenny uh, in this building and handling the finances. I couldn't appreciate her services anymore. And the more you're here, the more you realize um, what goes on. So uh, on the motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Oh, there's Judy. Can you hear me now, Judy? Judy? You can't hear her. I can't. I can't. Yes, yes, she, she gave can. the thumbs up. She be able to hear. Oh, there's, oh, there's. You can hear me? Well, she's, well, she's muted. muted. You're muted, You're muted but, but thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is a resolution authorizing Supervisor Van Tassel to appoint Ann Gallagher as confidential secretary to the supervisor at a salary not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. I really appreciate Ann's service to the town, and um, and to me, it, it's um, it's fantastic. Thank you very much, Ann. All in favor? A motion, I'm sorry, motion on the resolution. So moved. Aye. There you go. Ju I heard Judy then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Se second? Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution authorizing Super Vans Hassel to appoint Maureen Etta as safety coordinator at a salary not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. Maureen is a, a valued employee at the highway department and I did confirm with her that she would continue as the safety officer and she is. So uh, motion on the resolution, please. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution setting petty cash funds. Um, town clerk tax collector not to exceed $450 at a time. Superintendent of highways not to exceed $100 at a time. Board of assessors not to exceed $65 at a time. Rec department not to exceed $450 at a time. Code administration not to exceed $50 at a time. And justice court not to exceed $200 at a time. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Supervisor Van Tassel as a voting delegate to the annual Association of Towns meeting and naming Town Clerk Percicello as an alternate delegate in the event Supervisor Van Tassel is unable to attend. You'll be attending most of those. <laughs> Motion on the resolution. So so moved. Moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Tara K. Percicello as Registrar of Vital Statistics for the Town of Phillipstown and that her compensa compensation is the fee allowed by law. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Allison Shea as aide to the town board at a salary not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. Always a smile on Allison here. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. aye. Next is a resolution appointing Greg Warner as code enforcement officer and fire marshal at a salary not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. Couldn't be happier with Greg and his service to the town of Phillipstown. Motion on the resolution, please. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Linda Valentino as clerk to the code administrator at a salary not to exceed the amount set forth in the 2022 budget. Linda's another one constantly smiling. She told me the other day this is the best job she's ever had in her life. So. <laughs> I love going to talk to Linda. That's good stuff. Uh, motion on the resolution, please. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Susan DiStefano as clerk to the assessor at a salary not to exceed the amount set forth in the 2022 budget. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Thank you, Susan. Next is a resolution appointing Adam Hotelling as Deputy Highway Superintendent at a salary not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. Adam's a uh, 
gifted mechanic, gifted driver, and a great asset to the town highway department. Appreciate it, Adam. Uh, motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Maureen Etta as clerk supporting the highway department at a salary <laughs> not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. aye. Next is a resolution appointing Terry Fleming as clerk to the highway superintendent at a salary not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Cindy Paraggio as clerk to the town justice at a salary not to exceed the amount set forth in the 2022 budget. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Mark Farlow as town historian. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is a resolution appointing James Loeb, Adam Elrod, and Stephen J. Gabba of Drake Loeb, Heller, Kennedy, Fogarty, Gabba and Rod PLLC as counsel to the town of Phillipstown to serve at the pleasure of the town board to advise the town board, planning board, zoning board, and handle special land use issues. Said attorney to be compensated at the rate of $175 per hour to represent the town board, $175 per hour to represent the zoning board of appeals, $600 per month <clears throat> to represent the planning board for general services, advice, and attendance at meetings, and at the rate of $185 per hour for time to be charged to applicants matters. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, yes. the, the firm name is now Drake Loeb PLLC. We haven't been that long in like five years, so okay. if we could just amend it to make us Drake Loeb PLLC. Thank you. Okay. Be much appreciated. So we'll, you still yeah. want to work with us, Steve? I do, very okay. much. We're just what, under what you call us. It's, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, right. And we appreciate, we appreciate your guidance. I will amend it to. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All Second. in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is a resolution appointing Robert Cinque as counsel to handle various litigation matters, including tax certiorari litigation, and shall be compensated at a rate of $150 per hour, per hour plus out-of-pocket expenses. Motion on the resolution. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Robert Cinque as counsel to the town attorney to handle code prosecutions and advise code administrator officer at the rate of pay not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. So, Steve, if you get in trouble, he represents you. Is it? If we need someone to blame. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Motion on the resolution, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. aye. Next is a resolution appointing Tara K. Percicello and Joan Klaus as marriage officers. Check with Joan and see if she's still interested. As I, far I, as I know, she still is. Okay, wonderful. So she's your alternate if you're not. Yeah. Okay, fine. I can reach out to and her. And I tomorrow. refer people to her sometimes too, like if I'm not available or if. Yeah. All right, uh, motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. Thanks, Judy. All in favor? Aye. 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 And, and I vote aye. Um, next, is, next on the agenda is Supervisor Van Tassel to appoint Robert Flaherty as Deputy Supervisor. Well, I couldn't ask for a more trusted individual to act as my Deputy yes. Supervisor. And if you know Bobby, there's not a harder working soul on the planet. Thank you. Um, he gets a project and it gets accomplished. So thank you, Bobby. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Looking forward to be your Deputy Supervisor. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Do we need a vote on that? Doesn't the supervisor's appointment? There's no vote. That's an appointment. No vote. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Next on the agenda is Town Clerk Percicello to appoint, to appoint Kelly McIntyre as Deputy Town Clerk, Deputy Tax Collector, and Deputy Registrar at a salary not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. That's you, Tara. Yes, I hereby appoint Kelly McIntyre as Deputy Town Clerk, Deputy Tax Collector, and Sub Registrar. Stand the bell. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so next on the agenda is a resolution to appoint a, a, a new chairman of the conservation board. Right. Um, so it, that's, uh, Jason, would you like to comment on this? I mean, their, their chairman just resigned. I will leave it up to the conservation board to select a 
uh, a new chairperson. Yep. Um, and then we also have a vacancy on there, but I think we have a couple uh, resumes. So uh, that's right. We'll start the interview process soon and and get that appointment done. But yep. if you want to, when is their next meeting? Uh, next Tuesday night, and I know there's been conversation amongst the current conservation board members on like selecting a chair. Yeah, on oh. selecting a chair. All right, so, so we'll format. wait, and we we'll, can do that next month or next week. So, so, so we'll table number yeah, table thirty-three. Yeah, we'll table that. Somebody's just got to make a motion to table it. I make the motion we table this. Second. Second on the motion to table the appointment of the chair. Second. Thanks, Judy. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution authorizing compensation for the Garrison School Crossing Guard as per budget allocations not to exceed that set forth in the 2022 budget. Motion on the resolution. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing the following to the Continental Village Water District. Um, Ralph Bazignani as superintendent, Diane Barton as water tax collector, um, Steve LeClaire and Stan Houghton as assistant water treatment plant operators, and Bill Rim as assistant superintendent. Our very capable crew at Continental Village Water District. I, I will be reaching out to them next week. I'd like to go down and get a better feel of that whole operation. So. I'd like uh, to go with yeah, you we will. Uh, yeah. We could all go, so. actually. Yeah. It might be a good idea. But, Ralph, I'll be in touch. Thank you so much for, for all you do and the whole crew. So a motion on the resolution, please. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Michael Fallon, Ralph Bassignani, and Vincent Sistone to the Continental Village Water District Advisory Committee. Again, these guys' names keep popping up. Uh, they've been serving the community for a long, long time. As long as I've been here, 12 years, the same name. So appreciate your work, gentlemen. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Michael Fallon as superintendent of the Continental Village Park District. There's Mike's name again. Mike, uh, Mike does an incredible amount of work at the uh, Park District in Continental Village. I appreciate your effort, Mike, and we'll be in touch. Maybe we'll take a little road trip down and see them all. But uh, motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And aye. I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing the following to the Continental Village Park District Advisory Council. Um, John Sullivan, Frederick Romer, Tony Galfano, Vincent Sistone, and Ralph Bassignani. Motion on the resolution for the Continental Village Park Water Advisory Committee. I'm sorry, District Park District Advisory Council. So Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is a resolution setting the recreation pay scale for 2022 as follows. Um, for seasonal employees, um, so we've got sports directors and managers, and it would be for the season, the range of $800 to $1,800. Youth assistants, $1,320 to $20 an hour. Adult referees and umpires, $15 to $30 an hour. Youth referees um, and umpires, $1,320 to $20 an hour. Scorer and timer, $13.20 to $20 an hour. Equipment handlers, $13.20 to $20 an hour. Preschool and after school directors, $13.20 to $40 an hour. Assistants, $13.20 to $20 an hour. Custodial, $13.20 to $20 an hour. And for directors and instructors, um, camps, clinics, and theater, $13.20 to $50 an hour. Certified teachers, $13.20 to $40 an hour. Youth assistants, $13.20 to $20 an hour. Specialists, $20 to $65 an hour. And for park and facilities maintenance, um, $13.20 to $20 an hour. I want to know how I can be a specialist at $65 an hour. I'll take it. Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. But um, motion on the resolution to uh, accept the recreation pay scale for 2022, please. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution setting the 2022 hourly rate for part-time stenographers and part-time clerks as follows. Um, we have Ryan Allen at the Recycling Center for $17 an hour and Lillian Mosier as a school crossing guard at $20 an hour. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Neil Zuckerman as Channing, chairman of the, of the planning board. 
I reached out to Neil last week. He's happy to continue to serve as the chairman of the uh, planning board, and I couldn't think of somebody more qualified to be handling it at the moment. So thank you, Neil. Motion on the resolution, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Robert D. as chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I also spoke to Bob D. the other day about it, and he's also interested in continuing as the chair of the Zoning Board. Bob, I appreciate your work. We all do. Uh, it's fun to watch him. He's an interesting chairman. So you'll, you'll enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Uh, and I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Max Garfinkel as Wetlands Inspector and Natural Resource Officer. I spoke to Max last week also. He's willing to continue. He's a very, <laughs> very capable, knowledgeable individual. I appreciate your service, Max. Uh, motion on the resolution, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Karen Jackson as dog control officer. I also spoke with Karen. She is interested and does a wonderful job for the town. It's not an easy job either. <laughs> Motion on the resolution, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution <clears throat> excuse me, appointing Glenn P. Malia as special prosecutor for Judge Linson at an hourly rate of $150. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution appointing Angel Falcon as town prosecutor at an hourly rate of $125 an hour. Motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And aye. I vote aye. Um, next, Supervisor Van Tassel appoints the following council members as liaisons to the following. For the highway committee, it will be Councilman Flaherty. Um, for Putnam County Liaison, it will be Councilman Angel. For Planning, planning Board, Councilman Flaherty. Um, Land and Buildings, Supervisor Van Tassel. For the Zoning Board, um, Megan Cotter. For the Conservation Board, Councilman Angel. For the Village of Nelsonville, Councilwoman Cotter. And for the Village of Cold Spring, I believe it should be, it should be Councilman Flaherty. Okay. Um, for CVPOA, Councilman Angel. For the Haldane School, it will be both Councilwoman Farrell and Councilwoman Cotter, as well as the Garrison School. For Recreation, Councilwoman Farrell. For the Phillipstown Hub, Councilwoman Farrell. For the Butterfield Library, Councilwoman Farrell. For Information Liaisons, Councilwoman Farrell. And for the newly added Trails Committee, Councilman Angel. Um, and we also have to add the Cemetery Committee, which is going to be Councilwoman Cotter. We okay. never, I forgot to add that earlier today. Right, Meg? Yeah. You're interested. She said she actually enjoys the cemetery. Yeah, so. I'll be happy to take care of all those people. Wonderful. Okay. Um, next is approving the 2022 holiday schedule as follows. You've got Martin Luther's Day on... January 17th, President's Day on February 21st, Good Friday on April 15th, Memorial Day on May 30th, um, June Juneteenth was added at the request of the court clerk. I'm not sure what the mandate was on that when that was passed last year. I have to look into it. I don't so know if... Any, I think it's a federal a holiday. holiday. So it would be state as well. It is. It okay. Is, but... Uh, yeah, I, I think you're required. I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I, I know most municipalities give it off. Okay. Um, Independence Day, Monday, July 4th. Labor Day, Monday, September 5th. Columbus Day, Monday, October 10th. Election Day, Tuesday, November 8th. Veterans Day, Friday, uh, November 11th. For Thanksgiving, we get the Thursday, and then the day after is a day taken, but must be charged to comp or vacation. And it's the same way for Christmas. Um, and then I added New Year's Day because it has to be approved this year because we won't have a meeting before it happens okay. next year. So, gotcha. Motion on the resolution to adopt a um, schedule for holidays. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Um, that is that it for the reorg. Re um, it is only 725, so technically we do have to wait five minutes yeah, no to start problem. the regular meeting. Um, <laughs> 
And you just need to make a motion to close the reorg. Um, um, can I have a motion to close the reorg meeting, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. aye. Thank you all. And hi, Judy. I didn't say hello to you before. Hi, John. Hi. And congratulations, Supervisor Ben Castle. Thank you. Thank you so much. And count the woman. Yeah, she's down here. <laughs> I call you. So yeah, we do have to wait a few minutes. Can we all rise for the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everybody to the, um, our new meeting of the new town board. Uh, first Thursday of the month in the last 12 years that I didn't spend sitting next to Richard Shea. So um, thank you to Richard and uh, I welcome our new board member Meg Cotter. We also have Judy Farrell on Zoom and um, you know the rest of us here. So um, I would just like to take a moment to recall the events of last January 6th, um, the events that we really couldn't even understand. For me, I remember listening to it on the radio and then coming home from work and turning the TV on and just couldn't believe my eyes saying to myself, is this happening in the United States of America? So, I mean, we, we gotta think about that and um, Think about the lives that were lost and the challenge to our country that happened on that day. And then the movement of that Congress coming back into the room and continuing the operation of, uh, of government for the United States. So um, it was the lowest day and then probably one of the proudest days to see that you know continue, that the threat was quelled and we continued. So with that being said, I did mention Richard's name and um, over the past 12 years, Richard ran an amazing meeting. Um, there was constant professionalism in the room. There was rarely a raised voice. I mean, occasionally it would happen, but um, I'm gonna continue that. I want everybody to feel welcomed here. I want everybody to be respected and uh, I will not tolerate any disrespect. We would hope that we could all be professional and adults. We certainly will towards you, and, and we expect that back. We don't want people addressing each other in the audience. We would prefer you address us, and, and we will respond. So um, that's all I have to say. Would anybody else like to speak on the January 6th events of last year? If not, then we'll move right into the agenda. Okay. Oh, we have the, we have the deep... Folks. Depot Theater is first. Claudio, so we need to call the meeting to order for the theater group. Can you come up to the mic, Claudio? Otherwise, nobody's going to hear you. The uh, town board, as well as uh, two additional members, one from the Recreation Commission and one from the Depot Theater Board, act as the members of the corporation, which means they're essentially the stockholders and the owners of the corporation for the theater. You don't get any money. Either. No, you don't get any money. You get, <laughs> you get, you get Achido, that's what you get. Um, so um, under the bylaws, one third, of the mem one third of the board of the Depot Theater is elected each year so that every year, one third, it comes in. Um, and this time, I have three, uh, I would like to nominate three members that are currently on the board for re-election. Okay. Um, <laughs> the first one being myself. <laughs> Who he? Oh, no. No, so you can <laughs> vote him out. Um, Chris Novak of uh, Garrison and Catherine Plummer of, uh, of uh, Cold Spring. All, um, all three have been on the board for a while and would like to be renominated. And the length of term, Claudio, is three years. Three years. Okay. Can do we need a motion for that? Can I get a motion to appoint the three members of the board? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Claudio. Now we need a motion to close your meeting as well. So moved. 
Second on that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we can go home now. <laughs> okay, uh, approval of minutes. Special meeting of November 17th, 2021. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Monthly meeting, Meg, you can't vote on these. You were in here. I'm just nodding. Okay. <laughs> Monthly meeting for December 2nd, 2021. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. aye. Committee reports, uh, Conservation Board. Okay, so um, just to remind people, the, the purpose of the Conservation Board is uh, in Phillipstown to review proposals for development that may come close to um, environmental uh, valuable natural resources, wetlands, water courses, uh, and to find ways to make sure that development that's coming close to those um, valuable resources doesn't harm them, but that also people can, can build the homes they want. Uh, so at our last meeting of the Conservation Board, um, a number of issues came up. Surprise Lake uh, Camp, 382 Lake Surprise Road. Um, a number of, uh, a large number of trees were removed wrongfully. Um, there was a stop work order placed. Uh, the executive director uh, is trying to find a remedy to that. Um, but in the meantime, the conservation board agreed, you know, they really believe that they don't want to stop Surprise Lake Camp from being able to go forward this summer, especially with COVID. And so um, they've, re they've removed that one stop work order and are continuing to work with uh, Surprise Lake. Um, a number of other uh, residences had come about. Uh, 80 Justin's Way um, addressed a concern around the placement of a septic site that Conservation Board had uh, made a suggestion. It was followed, uh, and they're moving forward. They're, they're waiting for, this is something the Conservation Board does a lot, a mitigation plan for a driveway going through a wetland. So a mitigation plan just allows the uh, property owner to come up with other ways to make up for the fact that that uh, a driveway will come near a wetland. Um, and so, uh, and you know, um, I would say that the only other major business is that uh, we are looking for a new conservation board member. Uh, two residents have put forward their application. Both are well qualified. They've been sent to Supervisor Van Tassel. Uh, as discussed, we're also uh, looking for a new chair. Mark Galezzo stepped down, who, who did such a great job for 14 years. And, and the only thing I would, I would just say is that, you know, being a liaison on the conservation board, you see the fact that our town has you know, processes in place to protect our natural resources and all the volunteers that work on that bring a lot of knowledge to that. Um, and so I, I always value it. Uh, so. That conservation board also will help you, uh, assist you with conservation issues, which is amazing. They come out and they'll talk to you, help you through your process. So That's right. they're not just here to stop stuff, they're here to help stuff. You're so. right, you're right. You're all set. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good? Yes. All right. I'm, I'm, that, that's the I'm report. <laughs> <laughs> recreation. Judy, I guess you're doing recreation. Yes. Good evening and Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks. Um, I'm happy to report that the Phillipstown Recreation Center has been the site and the recreation department has helped assist in the COVID testing this week for Phillipstown residents. And I'd like to especially thank Amber Stickle, the director, because she was bright and early there on Monday morning so at 5.30, 6 a.m., um, helping even Supervisor Van Tassel as well to set up. Putnam County is doing the COVID testing there on the west side of the county. And I'd also like to thank our legislator from the county, Nancy Montgomery. But Phillipstown Recreation Department and staff have been very involved in supporting COVID testing. There's also going to be a vaccination clinic, another one on January 25th. So I would urge anyone who needs a test the testing is done Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. for students and staff of the schools in our Putnam County. And then from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. for all other Putnam County residents. Tomorrow, due to the snow, testing will be delayed until 10 a.m. And I just heard, in fact, that this Haldane School District is closed tomorrow. Yeah. So um, I don't know if staff will be still going for testing, but um you would check can check with phillipstown recreation center you can go to phillipstown new york phillipstownmy.myrec.com 
okay. for more information. And the next meeting of the Philpstown Recreation Commission is Tuesday, January 25th. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Um, and I would like to comment on the testing is going well. It's going on. I've been there in the morning, several mornings, and Amber was there at like 5.15 on Monday, which was amazing. Uh, she's very dedicated to it. There's not a lot of people getting tested, so I'm concerned that we're going to lose this resource if we don't um, utilize it. I'm not saying go get a test if you don't need it, but um, the more people that use the facility, the more likely we, likely we are to continue to have it. The county is committed to, you know, to having it for a while. Um, there was probably seven, eight cars online, so there's really no wait. You go, you get tested, and people have told me they've had their results in 20 minutes. So it, it's a great service, so let's utilize it. For anybody that feels that it's a threat to the recreation program, it, there's nobody inside the building. It's a completely outdoor event. There's two tents set up. You drive up, you register, you go around the other side, you get swabbed, and you leave, and you get the results via email. So. There is no concern of the virus or sick people being in the rec center or near any of our programs. So, and I believe our programs are going to resume on Monday, Judy. Correct? Yes, they're, they're, they are. Our programs are going to resume on Monday. Amber and I and, just. Um, we are so alert. Thank you um, to Deputy Supervisor Flaherty for um, working for years with the rec department and with um, the solar providers. I believe it's all been connected. Yes. So yes. our energy source. Yep. Yeah, it was turned down, I think, December 28th, and the sun hasn't been out since. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah unfortunately, the sun <laughs> hasn't been out much sun. since that day. Uh, but anyway, the system is 112 ki kilowatts, so it's, you know, it's enough to power the whole entire rec center and so forth. So, wow. Amazing. Anyway, Great so work. It was turned on. It was, like I said, we had it on right before the year end, so. Fantastic. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. The Phillipstown Hub. Danielle, is that Danielle? you? We have Danielle here. here? Yes, yes, she is. Yes. Hi, Danielle. Thanks for coming. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. I just want to thank Judy for always giving me the heads up on these meetings. So thank you, Judy. Um, <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> um, happy to be here. I just um, things are busy at the hub. I know, um, as everyone is likely aware, this pandemic has not been easy on anyone, especially in terms of mental health and addiction issues. And so we had um, at the end of towards um, we were in the middle of our annual appeal back in November. We shared our annual report, which we shared with the town board. We're so thankful for the town board's continued the town's uh, continued support of the hub when. The numbers back, um, th these are our numbers basically from July. We run from July 1 to June 30th. And last year we served a total of 142 residents in our care coordination program, which is basically guiding families through the process of finding resources for them um, in the area of addiction and mental health. A lot of times it's on-site support. We were one of the only organizations open for um, on-site, in-person visits um, and support during the pandemic. And so our staff is all vaccinated and boosted. Um, and this year alone already, we're looking at 104 people who have walked through our doors and we've already served. So you can see that the numbers wow. really keep growing. And those are, you know, those are unique residents here. Um, we have you know, multiple people who come in um, many times as well. A high number of um, Haldane students, um, a lot of adolescents really struggling. Um, and, you know, just when I hear the kind of inklings about schools maybe closing and going remote, it's something definitely that we're, we have our eyes on. Um, and with staff and teachers, too, we're really concerned about their mental health as they juggle so many different um, issues that come up with the pandemic. Um, so we keep plugging away. We have two care coordinators now, so we've grown our staff. Um, we have a development manager who helps out with things like getting the word out, our annual report, um, and managing our donors. We've had a really successful annual appeal, and so um, we're really, um, you know, just keep trying to serve the community. Thank you, Danielle, and thank you for all the work you do, and we, it, it's perfect for our community, and your dedication goes way beyond what was ever expected, so we appreciate your work and all of the work. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, John. Thanks, Danielle. Planning board. That's you, Bob. Nothing's going on at the planning no, board. No, no, nothing's on the planning board. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and, and thank you for coming there this evening, and Happy New Year, everybody. As usual, the planning board has a full agenda, 
as it has every month and actually over the several past several months we had special meetings to accommodate the uh, um, Shakespeare's festival as well anyway I attended the uh, planning board meeting on December 16th uh, new um, for new business we had one new new item on the agenda it's for residents down in um, uh, 825 route 90 in Garrison the people are looking to build a, a single family house with a pool a garage and, and so forth like that will be with their own well and septic system. It was a classified as a minor project and a site, uh, uh, type two seeker uh, action. Uh, referrals were made to the, uh, to the planning board, or the county planning board and so forth. And a site visit is planned for this Sunday at 930. We also had two public hearings. Uh, one of them was Andrea at five Juniper Hill Road in Garrison. Uh, the, uh, that, at that public hearing, there was no public comment at all. So everyone seemed to be in favor of the, of the new house that's going to be built there. Uh, the motion is to draft a resolution for next meeting, next month's meeting, to have the approvals. Uh, the next um, public here was Johnson and Redmond of Mountain Brook Road, uh, Cold Spring, New York. Another public hearing as well, and there was no public comment on that as as well. Uh, so a motion will, was will be for a resolution for that meeting for next month as well. Old business. Uh, Paul Hemus property management down on Route 9D and uh, uh, down here in the construction site. He's building a small garage, uh, 28 by 40. He was at the planning board the month before, and he had his approvals that night. Last, next thing on the agenda was, was uh, Hudson Highland Reserve, Route 9. Uh, that's been in the planning board for multiple years now. Uh, but they did come back a few months ago, and they're in their e, uh, the FES process right now. And um, there was a lot, some more discussion regarding that. And the board is asking for the further edits to the E, to the E, the FEIS for the next month's uh, meeting. Uh, the, a lot of the qu answers they had came back were really not in layman's terms so much. So they're asking them for a little bit different language and more clear, precise uh, language on that. Last on the agenda was the Garrison Golf Course with Shakespeare. Um, we had the... Um, Applicant, the traffic court, uh, consultant was on the meeting as well to give his last reports. There was a lot of concern about traffic as everyone is aware of. Um, he gave up, he gave all the updates that they were requesting. Uh, there'll be another site visit per this coming Sunday at 10 at 10 30. Uh, that's going to to see where they're going to put the bridge over the an area there to, on Snake Hill Road. So the planning board wants to see that in person to see how it's going to be. It's supposed to be all staked out, so they want to see that in person. <laughs> And they we're going to have a public hearing on uh, the 27th of this month. So everyone's welcome. Right now, the public hearing is scheduled to be here at the town hall and in this, in this venue right up here. The meeting was adjourned at 10.05. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Only 10 o'clock, huh? Yeah. Um, zoning, there was no zoning board meeting for December. Um, Kelly, do you know if there's a January one scheduled? I don't, I don't know if they have any agenda items, but if there is one scheduled for January, we'll get it on the website, Tara? Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's it for zoning. Highway, Bob, you're going to start yep, the highway permit. I'm starting permit. to plot highway. Very good. Okay. I'm so sorry to have to give this up. But <laughs> I'm sure much. you are. <laughs> okay. We're performed for the uh, Town of Phillips Sound Highway Department for the month of December. Early in the month, the crews were out busy assisting the Garrison Water District. As we stated a few times, we... We're in the process of drilling a new well down at the Garrison Golf Course there, not Garrison, the Highland Country Club. Unfortunately, it didn't yield us enough water, so we just, we really had to back out of that. We're looking at Plan B right now. Myself and Johnny, we B met with the- BNC. What's that? BNC. BNC. <laughs> we looked at a few different options, and uh, we'll, we're moving forward on a couple of other options. I'll discuss those at a later date. Uh, while the other crews were not working on there, there's also a lot of work being done at the town garage, as everyone knows, we're putting a new town garage up. And we're responsible for a lot of aspects up there as well, like five feet away from the building. We have to, that's our position, our job that we have to take care of. So they were working on a lot of different couple uh, trenches that need to be in and stone that needed to be put in. So they've been working on that. Updates to the new fueling system. Ballards were placed around the new fueling station. The software provided the fuel station data was downloaded. Gas and diesel tanks were filled for the very first time. Uh, no fobs have been issued to, to those who are going to be using the filling station. As you know, people just go up, a lot of people use our station up there for the fueling and so forth. So everyone's going to have a fob so it can be tracked 
at who's using what gas and so forth like that. So that's a, that's we didn't have that in the past. We had some other type of a code, but this is a new system that we're installing. So it's going to be a lot easier for everybody. It's easier to track as well. So um, so we're just waiting for that that system being to be installed. It's pretty much there. Probably be next week or so, it should be up and running. Updates to the new highway garage. The footings have been poured. When digging for the trench of the oil separator, we hit a lot more ledge than we had anticipated, so more hammering had to be done, but it's all in place now. The garage walls were formed, and it was also poured the back walls as well. We are still searching for a diesel mechanic to join our crew. If anyone's interested, please contact uh, Carl. Um, you know, we have a lot of vehicles that need maintenance up there, so one of our chief uh, engine, um, mechanics retired last year. Uh, Anthony Groofy, and he was there for quite a few years, so we really miss him, miss his talents up there. Uh, we continue to our Zoom sessions with FEMA to do updates on Ida. The highway department has received approximately 25 phone calls, emails regarding road complaints or issues for the, for the month of December. The highway department spent approximately $7,000 in vehicle maintenance and repairs. <laughs> Submitted by Carl Rosenda, highway superintendent. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Carl. Um, building and land acquisitions, I have nothing. Bobby commented on the, uh, the new highway garage, the progress. We are moving finally. If you go up, you'll see the uh, back wall of the garage is up, which is exciting. So um, there's still a delay. We had a meeting the other day. I'm trying to get information on the actual steel building, which is delayed. Um, manufacturing of it is delayed because of COVID, obviously. So um, there is um, hope that it will be on the production line sometime in April. So until then, we'll continue to do the site work. Bobby mentioned we put in a water oil separator. We have a wash bay that's going in the garage. The cleaner these trucks are with all the salt they get, the longer we la they last. But any of that water has to be collected and any oil has to be separated out of it. So it's a, it's a complex system that goes in the ground and then there's two retention bins. And, the minute they started digging, they hit ledge, so we had to rent a larger machine and a heavier hammer to break it out. So, But they are installed now, and the, the machine is going back. So um, that was accomplished. And like Bobby said, everything outside that five-foot building uh, envelope, five foot away, um, we've done that. Our crew is doing that ourselves to save some money for the town. So thank you to Carl and the crew. So moving right along. Uh, cemetery Committee. Uh, cemetery committee, pretty quiet. The grass has stopped growing and it's too cold for stone masonry work, so pretty quiet until spring, probably. Yeah. Putnam County Legislator, is Nancy on? She is on Zoom. Hold on one second. Nancy, I don't know <clears throat> if you're there. I'm here. Hi. Hey. Can you see me? Or I can hear you. Hold on. I will. Great. As long as you can hear me, you don't need to see me. Okay, I was gonna say, do you want to be seen? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I, I just, I'm so happy to see all of you and Happy New Year. Um, this is really exciting. I'm sorry I'm not there because, uh, you know, I just wish I was there uh, sharing the festivities with the new council members and our new supervisors. Con you. Congratulations. We wish and, you were here too. Man. Yeah, wonderful to see our truly trusted counselor, uh, Mr. Gaba. I'm sorry I'm not there for that, but um, just quickly, I know you have a full agenda and Steve is the guest of honor and we're all looking forward, a lot of people are on are looking forward to his presentation. Um, just quickly, as you know, they're doing testing at the rec center um, and vaccination clinics at the rec center. I just um, got word that about uh, over 4,000 Tests have been distributed throughout Putnam County. I know the town hall and the village received a limited number. I'm trying to get a number from the county of exactly what's been distributed to where. Um, I think it's important to have that information so we know who got what. Um, and again, you know, thank you to the rec department and Amber Stickle for pulling it together so quickly. I have to apologize for the lack of communication and that you guys had to pull that together. I was just as surprised as you were that that was happening at REC and I'm glad that um, I'm glad that everybody was able to, you know, regroup and, and pull that together so quickly. It just, it shows, you know, how, how well you guys work together. Um, you know, m my, my work on the legislature this year, it's its a new year. And as I said, um, during our organizational meeting on Tuesday night, 
you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward and hoping to work with the county executive, with the legislature, um, and, you know, in every department in the county. I think we've got, you know, a lot of repairing to do, and we need to share an information. And this rollout of the testing and vaccines is a good example. And as I said, you know, we need to share information with each other, enable to so we, we can combat this crisis. And and just the rollout, as you know, of the testing, um, you, you you weren't aware. And I think that's that's what has to change. We need we need some incident command happening you know, on the county level. And I think the only way to see this pandemic ends is is to collect, analyze, and share the information. And I hope that, that the county will, will do that with you and I'll work very hard to make sure that they do. Um, so again, if you need anything, give me a call. Have any questions, please let me know. I'm here to help. And again, I'm really excited about working with this new team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Um, yes, it was a bit of a surprise to us that we were hosting the, uh, the testing center. We kind of found out um, after it was announced, but we're happy to have it. We're happy to have this service here. And um, Nancy did mention that the county provided us today with some at-home tests. We have, the town of Phillipstown was giving 130 of them. So we have them in the lobby of the town hall if you're sick, we don't want you coming into the inner part of town hall. They're in the outer lobby. Um, it's uh, basically we're trusting you. We're leaving them there. You are on camera, so if you take the whole box, you're going to be seen taking it, and we will find you. But the uh, there is tests available. We have 130. I believe the village got 70. There are also uh, the village of Nelsonville got some as well. There is. Uh, I know a lot of the churches in town got some. The senior center, there was a few other. Um, but they're here if you need them. Um, they're here during um, office hours, 8 to 4, 8.30 to 4. Yeah. The front door is open. Come in and take one. It's in the corner by the med box. Just take one home. They're a little complex. Um, it's not the easiest system, but it, it, we're thankful to have them. Though. Thank you, Nancy. Appreciate your work. You. Just a note, I did send a memo to the county executive today um, with a request to identify exactly how many were going and being distributed, but also to get a handle on when and if we would get some KN95 masks. I know people have been asking me because they've seen throughout the state and other counties and other municipalities um, have been receiving KN95 masks. So I know you were given those Hanes masks again. It's advised to please, you know, wear sufficient masks, masks that are, you know, secured on your face and no gapping. It's really important at this time to keep everybody safe. So um, once I get word, if I get a response from my memo that I sent out today, I'll let you know. But uh, be safe, get vaccinated, um, and, and please, if you have any symptoms, get tested. Thanks. All righty, thank you very much. So that's it for the committee reports. Moving into the agenda. The first item on the agenda is a resolution authorizing the highway department <clears throat> to purchase a new John Deere four wheel drive loader in the amount of $166,570 financed through KS State Bank. So this was a, a budget item that was approved. Um, and if you actually, I spoke to Carl today, they're replacing a 2004 loader that's been in the salt shed since we got it in 2004. So it's, um, it still functions, the one that's there, but it's, it's on its last legs apparently. And if you look at the deal Carl got, my God, the list price on this thing was $259,000 um, and we purchased it for one sixty-six five. So thank you to Carl. Um, I guess it was, it's not a leftover, it's brand new machine but it was um, on the lot and they were able to purchase it at a, a greater reduced rate. So yeah, and then, you know, last year they had to put a lot of money into that, that the old the loader one. as yeah. well. So. So, all righty, uh, motion on the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All, in, all in favor. Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution, resolution authorizing Supervisor Van Tassel to sign the contract between the town and Ronald J. Gaynor, PE, PLLC, for fiscal year 2022. Um, we do a lot of work with Ron. He's a very knowledgeable individual, uh, a wealth of knowledge for town issues. Um, 
he is incredible. Bobby, you've been doing a lot of work with him lately with the, um, the water, water district, district. Uh, but he is, he is fantastic and knows how to work the system very well. So uh, can I get a motion authorizing me to sign a contract with Ron Gaynor for year of 2022? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. aye. Well, what's with this one? It says Supervisor Shea. I know. <laughs> oh, I, I, revi I you, so you didn't print the revised agenda I sent you. <laughs> um, Save <laughs> paper. Sorry. No. Just, right. There we go. Next is a resolution authorizing Supervisor Van Tassel to sign the contract between the town and Max Garfinkel as the town's wetlands inspector and natural resource officer for the fiscal year 2022. As I said earlier, I had a conversation with Max this week. Uh, wonderful individual, perfect demeanor to do the work that he does, and very, very knowledgeable. So I'm happy to be signing a contract with Max to be our natural resource officer for the year 2022. Uh, can I get a motion on that resolution? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Next on the agenda is town attorney Steve Gabba to explain the process for the GG for the Hudson Valley Shakespeare Festival project. That's you, Steve. Sure. Um, I'll be happy to go into that if that's the board's um, uh, wish. Uh, the reason that um, I uh, came this evening, and I'll come to future meetings if the board yes. so desires, uh, is to discuss the recent application that was received in November of the Garrison Golf, uh, uh, Garrison Golf, uh, in the Hudson Valley Shakespeare Festival for a special event permit. There's been a little confusion over this. There's as a there's an application pending before the planning board for a permanent development on the Garrison Golf property. This permanent development will consist of an outdoor tent for, I believe, 530 in seating, plus a, uh, uh, an indoor theater, which is around 250 in seating, plus a restaurant, a hotel, um, a um, uh, a catering establishment, um, various accessory buildings. And that development will require site plan approval from the planning board, subdivision approval from the planning board, and a zoning change from the town board. The applications on that permanent development of the property, which is for multiple uses, uh, are subject to a process that's called CEQRA, the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Before any of the approvals that are sought for that permanent development can be granted, the, it's called the lead agency under CEQRA. It's, it's the, if there are multiple agencies involved, one agency kind of takes charge of the process and, and shepherds it through the CEQRA process. CEQRA involves looking at potential adverse impacts environmental impacts of a project and making a determination of whether changes need to be made to that project to minimize to the maximum extent practicable those potential adverse impacts. It's, it's kind of a kind of an additional layer, a gloss on the land use approval process. It's part of it, but distinct from it. It's not the same as a site plan approval to go through CEQRA, but you must go through CEQRA before you grant a site plan approval, if you follow me. So all of that is transpiring right now. The planning board is reviewing a application for site plan approval and subdivision. It has undertaken CEQRA review upon them. The town board has received a petition for a zoning change. It is not yet take an action on that application. There's a, a draft that's been worked out, but I, I, I don't think it's quite ready for uh, action by the town board just yet, but all that's in the works. What the town received in November is an application for a special event permit to simply take the tent that's at Boscobel right now for Hudson Valley Shakespeare Festival and put it on the Garrison Golf property for a period of not more than one year. The Garrison Golf property 
has special zoning. It's part of what's called a planned development district. It's zoning that's tailored to a proposed development of particular property separate and apart from all the zoning around it. So you might have multiple properties in an area that are zoned uh, residential, commercial, industrial, whatever they may be, and that zoning designation will cover multiple properties. A PDD, Planned Development District, is zoning that's tailored for proposed development of, it can be multiple lots, but they're all being developed in unison. One development, and it's special zoning just for that, okay? And it so happens that the Garrison Golf property is in a planned development district. There's confusion over this because it was enacted uh, in 2005, the planned development district for Garrison Golf. And it's a, it's a quirk in New York state law that when a local law is enacted, although it as a practical matter should be added to your code, it, it gets added to your code by, it's called general code. It's a, it's a company up in Albany. Um, but you don't have to. And often municipalities, because planned development districts are so idiosyncratic to one property or one small group of properties, they don't bother going through the expense of adding that planned development district to their code. So in the town of Phillipstown, you have the Quarry Pound planned development district. You, the town never just didn't add it to its code. It enacted the local law and needed for that special zoning. It just never added it to the code. And so too with the Garrison Golf Plan Development District. It was enacted as a local law and codified in your code, I have a copy right here, at uh, section 175-61.2. Um, and unless you actually got hold of the town clerk and said, give me a copy of 175-61.2, you, you would not know what the zoning was for the Garrison Golf Plan Development District. So within the Garrison Golf Plan Development District, a number of uses are permitted. And one of the uses that's permitted is special events. And special events are defined as including, among others, outdoor concerts, art or music festivals that attract more than 100 spectators. Special events are permitted as of right in the Garrison Golf Plan Development District, subject to one condition. That condition is that you have to apply for a parade permit. Strange but true. Now, what we received in November, what the town received in November, was an application from the Hudson Valley Shakespeare Festival in Garrison Golf to hold a special event on the Garrison Golf property, again, consisting of, as I mentioned earlier, the tent that currently is at Boscobel moving down. This is, although it may on its surface look very similar to the application pending before the planning board for the permanent establishment, it's not the same thing. This is a special event, that's a permanent development. In fact, even the tent is different <laughs> than what's proposed to be the outdoor tent at the permanent development. So yes, superficially they may look alike, but they're really completely separate things. Now, in terms of the application for um, the, they, they call it a special event permit, although there really is no special event permit. If you get to hold a special event if you get a parade permit. <laughs> in terms of a parade permit, what is required is, um, and the, the Garrison Golf uh, uh, Plan Development District zoning tax on a few more informational requirements. But what's required is that you uh, answer all the questions that are needed under the town code. Um, and it's, what here? Chapter 125 for uh, a permit to get a parade, uh, to hold a parade. Now, in terms of parade permits, I guess the best analogy I can think of would be an application for a building permit. The builder comes in with his plans to the building department and he says, I want to build, I don't know, a house, a garage, barn, whatever it is, on my property. And look, I meet the zoning and I meet the building code. And um, you know, there's, there's no problem with setbacks. My lot meets, meets all the bulk requirements. Building inspector takes a look at it, and if he makes a determination that all the requirements are met, he issues the building permit. 
That's all there is to it. There's no opportunity for input from the public. There's no public hearing. It's simply a matter of do you check all the boxes. If you check all the boxes, you get the permit. And it's the same thing with parade permits. Now, parade permits are not made to the building department. They're actually submitted initially to the town clerk, who then passes it on to the town supervisor. It's the town supervisor who goes through the application and all the requirements that are set forth in the town code, uh, chapter 125, as well as the additional ones set forth in the Garrison Golf Plan Development District to make sure all the boxes are checked. And if all the boxes are checked, he really has to issue the, the, the permit. I have reviewed the application submitted by the um, Garrison Golf uh, uh, LLC, Garrison Properties LLC and the Hudspear, Hudson Valley Shakespeare Festival and I can tell you it's proper in form and substance. The supervisor has been going through um, the various requirements that are, are set forth informational requirements and he'll make a determination at some point as to whether those have been met or not. And um, assuming that it's, it's granted, which you know, it may or may not be, or granted with conditions, then for whatever period of time he determines is appropriate, one year is what's on the table, um, the tent will be set up and the Shakespeare Festival will take place for one year on the property. If they want to do it again next year, they'll have to apply again for a special event permit and so forth and so on. Now, if the zoning is enacted for the permanent um, development on the property and if the subdivision and the site plan are granted, then you'll see a permanent development there and you'll see the uses carry on from year to year as long as the owners want to do it after that. Again, superficially that may look like the special event permit that's being sought, but it's just not the same thing. One is a temporary use which is permitted as of right in the existing district, and the other one is a zoning change and permanent development. Did you want me to go into the, the approval process for, for the, the permanent development, or is that satisfactory? Well, that's a planning board issue, and I think that would be the place for that explanation. And I believe you've done that a few times. I have. At the, at the planning board. So uh, I appreciate you coming in and explaining that whole process. And I want to say thank you to Richard to get waiting till January for this approval process to take place. But um, I have read through the application, and uh, although Steve said it, it is up to me completely to make the decision, I did um, offer all of the information to the entire board. I've reached out to each one of you, uh, even Megan, before I swore her in, but I, I, did, um, I, I knew she would be here this evening. So um, there are a few items that, well, first of all, Steve brought it up the point that this is a completely different application than what's before the planning board. I want by no means to affect the, um, planning board process. the operation of the planning board. So this tent is the existing tent that was that is at Boscobel, or it's this is you know it's taken down at this point at Boscobel, but it's being placed on um, an existing impervious surface, which were tennis courts at um, at Garrison. So um, the application before the planning board the tent is on the fairway at the top of the hill so this is completely different um also I, too it's, it's the, the basketball has been operating in the same capacity over these years with this right. special boost permit and parade permit right, right? The, the special, special permit right. the, special the current basketball uh, operation for 33 years has been operating under the same thing so basically what happens is a permit is issued the tent goes up, our building inspector goes out and inspects the tent, makes sure that it's sound, that it's fit, that the exits are there, um, and they get a permit each year. Um, I did speak with Greg Warner about this application as well. He doesn't see any issues with it being placed where it was. There were a couple items that um, I did bring to the uh, attention of Shakespeare. Um, they were looking, I'm looking for a letter from the fire district, the ambulance corps, as well as the Putnam County Sheriff's Department, or a police agency, as in the application, it states that um, when there's an event going on, they will provide a police officer at 9 and 
Snake Hill until the permanent uh, light is set up. So um, I did question a number of the items as far as parking capacity. Um, they have adequate parking. They have a, um, an independent, and this is all public, there is an independent parking study done by a parking engineer. They're utilizing, the, the golf course is no longer in use, so they're going to utilize um, the fairways. I have a you know, concern, you know, if it's a rainy day, if it's a stormy day, will people be able to access the fairway in order to park? So that's, that's being addressed by uh, a local engineer. Um, I was told that there is a paved cart path that gets to this fairway that they're going to utilize. They have parking for, I believe, 450 cars total. Um, the most that's ever been at Shakespeare in Boscobel was 280 cars. So they could operate an event at the current banquet facility and have Shakespeare operating and still have ample parking. Um, they also have provided a noise study for the site, an independent engineer noise study. I've been on the board for 12 years, um, and I also asked some of my predecessors, has there ever been a noise complaint for Shakespeare at Boscobel? And the answer was no. There were some complaints earlier about, um, when I first got on the board, there was a wedding facility also set up at the Boscobel location, and there would be loud music. That's the only complaints that we've ever had. They also provided a lighting um, design and a survey. And again, 33 years of successful operation at Boscobel and not a single complaint on the lighting. So um, I am waiting for a, uh, a written response from the Garrison Fire District and the Garrison Ambulance Corps, but I did speak with members uh, of both of those organizations that they're content with the plan. They have seen the plan. Um, and I also did speak with the Putnam County Sheriff um, last night, as a matter of fact. So they, um, they're in the process of getting this. Pending those approvals, uh, the reason I'm reaching to Garrison and Garrison Ambulance and Garrison Fire is currently it's in Phillipstown Ambulance, Cold Spring Fire District, so it's moving. So I just want to confirm with them that they're content with the plan and the site plan. So once those are in place, I, I will be issuing a special event permit to the uh, Hudson Valley Shakespeare Festival to operate at the garrison. So just want to make that public. Does any, anybody at the board have any comments? No, I think the only, the only point I would make, and, and I thank you know, Supervisor Fantastic for reaching out to us all on the, on the special event permit, that it's, it seems pretty straightforward um, in terms of that special event permit. And just, Steve, thank you for that kind of thinking about the process. And it seems like uh, this permanent development proposal will come to the town board when that zoning um, change is requested. And there will be a public hearing. And that is when the town board will be able to ask more questions uh, about that, the entire permanent development. No as you question. Make no question. Yeah. And, and there would be a public hearing yeah. attached or several public hearing attached with that law change? There will certainly have to be for the local law, yes. Correct. Okay. Anybody else? Well, I just wanted to see was very clear. I think there was some confusion. It's got to look at this as two separate operations, two separate applications It's a, as it's going through it. I mean, I don't want to, my <coughs> concern was if we issued this special permit, is it going to hinder the, the planning board in their process and make them think differently. And Steve is at very clear that it's got to act at, at this as two separate items. So that was my only concern regarding that. Okay. And I didn't want to, you know, per, doesn't want, I don't want this special permit think that it's going to persuade the planning board in either way. The planning board operates independently from us and they make their own actions. So I just want to be clear on that as well. And, and they're a very independent group, so there's no doubt. Megan? I would just like to add, attended the Hudson Valley Shakespeare Festival performances for years that um, I've observed the traffic patterns. I've never seen a problem there. Um, and, you know, local um, volunteers have been very helpful in helping to direct the traffic. So I, I don't anticipate um, any difference between that and the tent being at a different up at the, the you know, up on Route 9. I don't anticipate um, any issues there because of the capacity. Correct. Okay, thank you very much, Steve, for that. Yes, thank appreciate you. It. Appreciate the explanation. Um, I will briefly open it up to the public. I am, we are not going to address the permanent 
application that's before the planning board. Um, I would be willing to discuss briefly the uh, proposed special event permit, uh, but that is it. So does anybody have any public comment on me issuing the special event permit? Joe, would you like to step up? Thank you. I have a copy of the application here. It's for two years, not for one. It's it's going to be for one year. You but the, the one, year one year. It will be a one, one year permit. Was submitted was for two. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Right. Right. Um, and secondly, the um, it's a special event. An event is it's not a plural. It's a singular. It's event. So it would be a concert or it would be a uh, golf tournament. It's not a one year long, you know, six month process of, of repeated um, shows. The third thing is that, that the difference between Route 9 and Route 9D is legion. So to draw the parallel that, well, we don't have a traffic issues on 9D or it's not dangerous on 9D versus the proven um, fatality of Route 9 and the issues that have occurred on, on Route 9 versus 9D, it's facile to say that the two were the same. In addition, the, uh, in the application, the, uh, the attorney that filled out the form dismisses the volume of traffic by saying, well, it's the same volume of traffic that we have down at, at Boscobel. The distinction is, of course, that at Boscobel they're not holding weddings with a couple hundred people simultaneous with a theater with a couple hundred people, simultaneous with staff for the wedding and staffs for the theater, all trying to get out onto Route 9 instead of Route 9D. And I think that if there's going to be a flaw in the um, secret review for the, the overall Shakespeare production, where it's going to hinge on is going to hinge on the traffic. And I think that getting a positive deck on the, on the traffic is possible, if not likely. And so what's going to happen is you're going to have a planning board process. But we're not discussing No, I, I understand. But, not but, but, but what's happening with this special application, by, by virtue of the answers, which I think were, were not particularly straightforward in the special application, they're subverting or going around the, the, the secret doesn't anticipate, didn't anticipate in 2004 a, 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 an activity as, as uh, populous as, as the theater con, in conjunction with the weddings. And I, I think that it really is a bit of a, of, of a um, I, I think the application is flawed and I think it's unfortunate that, that that going back to just one point, and I appreciate the fact that you've opened it up, and I understand this is a little little out of the ordinary. Um, you know, you go back to the the, the Highlands Preserve that uh, was mentioned at the start of the meeting. The review of that, and it's about 300 acres, 250 acres, has been going on for years. We've got seven or 800 acres being reviewed here, and it's going like that, and it's going so fast that members of the public don't have an, a chance to really understand what's going on. And it's a, it, to me, it's also interesting to understand why, you know, there's, uh, there seems to be a certain amount of, of I mean, let's say that positive support from the town government for this. And it would be interesting to just understand that and understand what the issues are and why that support is there, and they may all be perfectly good reasons, and they may, have, they may be business development reasons, they may be employment reasons, there are any number of reasons, but it seems like this thing's just moving forward at an extraordinary rate of speed for an enormous project with a huge impact on the community, and now it turns out that there's a workaround this, that, that's this is not a workaround, Joe. This is a completely different application, so I'm not, I'm not going to listen to that. Uh, yeah, and no, to I say understand. that, hold on, to say that this process is being rushed, this has already been before the town for 15 months. We, we don't see any end to it. Um, it could go for another year. It could go for another two years. So there is nothing being rushed. There is planning board public hearings. The planning board meetings are open to the public. 
This process has been explained to the public on a number of occasions by the town attorney, who also represents the planning board. So to say that this process is being rushed is absolutely well, they're, false. They're, they're, look, and I don't want to, but there are special, there aren't special hearings for the reserve. I mean, there, there, the, there have been special planning board here, not hearings, meetings, uh, the terminology. Which are all open to the public. No, I understand that, but the, the planning board has got thousands of pages of documents to review, and they're being to ask to go, they're having special sessions. Now, why are they having special sessions? I mean, why isn't, you know, no one else gets special sessions, but there are special sessions for this, puts more pressure on the planning I think board. It's basically, and I'm not gonna answer for uh, the chairman of the planning well, board, but it's, it's just the volume of the work that they're currently facing with these several different projects that are going on with the reserve, like you'd said. So they're doing more than one meeting a month just to keep the process moving. Well, that, that's correct. We, that's, if we didn't do this, it was going to hold up other applications for the planning board. So we're trying to accommodate not just Shakespeare, but all the other people that are being applicants as well. Because if we only had one meeting a month, we don't have special meetings every single month for them, but if we only had one, it would, it would hold up all these other applicants at the particular time. So we're well, trying to accommodate them as well. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Um, I just... You know, I think that the thing should slow down, and and well, John, uh, I, the public hearing is next. The twenty seventh is the first public hearing for for this for that application before the planning before the planning board. Right, we'll be but ready, if we we'll don't. Be. Okay, all right. But again, the you know the the a careful reading of the special permit application um, really it, it it what's what's being asked for the re, the reasons it, it really doesn't hold water, and it's disappointing to see that that's gonna be granted because- Well, it, it does for me and it does yeah. for the town board. So, and, and, and the legal, our legal counsel as well. So, but thank you, I appreciate you. For your, one year. Sure, for, for one, one year. year. They did request two, but we all decided that we give them one. one it'd be a one we year. We didn't want to go two years. Um, I, oh, Hi. before. Sorry, there's, just, there's a, been a hand up in Zoom. I don't know. Yeah, let's oh, you want to Zoom? No, 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 it's okay. You, yeah, if you could relax. I'm Go just going to, um, her name is Liz Corio, if you can hear me. Um, I'm going to unmute you. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, thanks. I just wanted to uh, take a moment. I'm a, my name's Liz Corio. I'm a resident of Phillipstown and um, travel that Route 9 corridor back and forth um, to Peaksville quite often. Um, I just wanted to say I'm grateful to the town board for um, considering as thoroughly as you have the application for the special special um, special event permit. Uh, I think that the 33 year track record uh, and and knowledge and learning that the Shakespeare Festival has under its belt from its time at Boscobel will serve uh, its transition to this space for the next year. I know that the applicants and the, the, the organization will work in good faith with the town board to learn as they go. And although, yes, it is a series of many wonderful nights under the tent, uh, not just a single concert, um, each day, each show is a new day. And um, if there are issues to be addressed, I know that this town board uh, and this organization will do their utmost uh, to address those as we go. And so I'm grateful that um, Supervisor <clears throat> that Supervisor Van Tassel is able to has reached out to um, con consult with the um, entities that you have. Thanks for explaining the process. That um, the the presentation from Steve was was incredibly helpful to me. And I know a lot about this project, but I learned stuff tonight. So I just wanted to say thank you. And I'm and I'm excited to visit um, the property under the tent next year. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and, and I think you brought up a good point. Um, if this were a group coming in cold that we, the town, wasn't familiar with, I think it would be a total different operation or a decision for me. They've been here for 33 years and cooperative with the town of Phillipstown for 33 years. Um, I think it's a wonderful cultural event and I would not want to lose it, so. Um, and you lost last season due to COVID, or the season before, sorry. So um, there's an economic portion of it that we, we can't afford to take either. So um, I didn't take the decision lightly, and it is um, it is easier knowing the group and the track record that they have, so. 
I would just like to make a comment that given we're just talking about the special event permit, because obviously there's going to be public comment on the much larger proposal on January 27th, and then when it comes before the town board, just the point on the special event permit, I think it's a, me personally, I think it's a positive thing because I think, you know, for some, it's human nature to be worried about something that's new and the special event permit will let people see over the summer what the, how the operations change nine uh, as the other separate process goes forward. And so I think it's a, it's a positive for people to see what that changes in reality over the summer. Right. Anybody else? Hi, my name's Tim Hi. Nolan. I live Hi. in Garrison. How are you, Tim? Well, thank you. What a handsome room this has turned thank into. You. Um, I think most of what you've been talking about is irrelevant. And that what we all need to do mm -hmm. is to read this. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is the criteria for a special event permit. Okay. Okay. Do you want I, to read I it? have read that, but thank you. Want me to read it again? Should, Let me no, read it's it okay. again. We don't need okay. to read through it. But. An extraordinary activity or occurrence such as a golf tournament this by the way and I do understand the PDD is written specifically for this property otherwise we wouldn't be referencing right. which, which, golf which, tournaments and so which on is a was went through a planning totally board 2005 of, I think I'm speaking right go now. ahead this went through the planning process in 2005 Five. so public hearing this whole property has been decided no Okay, go ahead. No, Art, good to go. Yep. Look, there's a 40-room hotel. It could be. It's signed off on. Correct. It's good to go. Along I with no other. I have no issue with that. Yes. That is the law. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. I do understand that. Okay, good. Um, this is specific to this property. The 100 folks for a golf tournament makes that, I think, abundantly clear. If you, English is my mother tongue. And if you can read this and not tell me that the whole underlying premise of this is to prevent long-term impactful events as part of this PDD, then we're not reading the same stuff. I guess we're not. I we're not. And, and if, Nor did our, if our the, turn. I'm not interested in anything except what you think because you're the guy. Correct. Okay, Richard was the guy. Correct. Richard went... Correct. So now you're the guy. Yep, I get me. that part. Yeah. Um, but this, to me, is on the face of it, clearly, okay. a violation of what the zoning precepts are that were attached to this PDD. It doesn't matter if it's the Shakespeare Festival or uh, a Granny's Cook Fest if it's lasting more than two or three days. It's very, very clear that all these identified events are of short duration. It's also is, very is that clear. written in there that it's a short duration? Or are you just interpreting that written in there? Because it's tell not. Me, tell me if, if community it's, days it's or, uh, or golf tournaments, it's if you're a player, there's three, three days maybe? There's no time limit. There's no time limit. We can play that game if you want to. No, I, don't, I don't want to. Okay. But I don't want to either. Right. Again, it's not very, me. very clear. For you. And For me too. I, different language. Okay, if you and and mind as well. I, what do you need to start this process? What's the trigger, Mr. Gaba? What's the Mr. Gaba? What's the trigger I, I think for you're this addressing process? Us. Well, he, what is it? What it's is a it? parade permit? No, it's especially okay. Bad. Have you had a hundred and forty uh, day long parade? So recently? would it be easier for you to uh, to accept this if I issued a new permit every day of the season from May to would that would that make it easier for you to accept? I mean, there there is no time frame put on that. Look, Look. So we started out in the same place tonight, mm -hmm. which was referencing what went on in Washington last year, correct, and what went on in Washington today. Mm -hmm. And I watched that this morning, as you did, I or listened to. I listened. It was striking mm -hmm. to see the president in that place this morning. Um, and it made me think, mm -hmm. because I knew we were coming here tonight. Mm -hmm. And what I thought was, the rule of law begins at home. It doesn't begin down there. It starts here. Correct. OK. And this, to me, and I think to many other people, is obviously 
a workaround. And it's a violation. And again, I don't care if it's Shakespeare or not. Mm -hmm. that's, not the, that's not the point here. And, and, and from a practical standpoint, which is how you've been working, mm -hmm. uh, there may not be a great impact. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are going to put their tent down on the tennis court and, and, and do OK. But that isn't the rule of law. And That's if you, st opinion. you start small with that stuff, OK? Everybody starts small. And it can't happen here. It can't happen to us. We're, but you know what? It did happen to us. And it is happening to us. And I want it to be boiled down to this, because this is what's in front of us now. And if you can tell me that I'm wrong about this, I'm that sorry. I'm misreading this, you I'm, you I'm misreading this. You are, sir. There okay. is no time for input on that. Then, then, you, then you and I don't, we don't breathe the same air. You had something from Mr. Gaba? Steve, would you like to comment on that? The only other thing that I was going to add was that in interpreting this, the town board does not write on a blank slate. Boscobel maintained the Hudson Valley Shakespeare Festival under a special event permit for I years. I was able to surface those. They're issued by the, um, the building I department. I for them. I presented a foil for them. Uh, I was supposed I to get to a response. You. It was directed to you. Not that I'm aware of. Tara directed it to you. I have the foil form. You were supposed to respond. You haven't responded. I haven't seen those permits. Okay. Okay. Can I see those permits? We'll certainly work at it. We would like to work at it? Yes, sir. No, work at it. Like okay, okay. So Anything else? I mean, it's just, we're functional here. I, mm -hmm. we're we are very functional. We, we, we function here every month, every year, continuously. This yeah. is one, okay. excuse yeah. me, this is one item that's sparking your interest, and don't come in and act like we don't function. We, excuse me. So, so, so I, I, can I just add that, it, that I, I, I want to, Mr. Regley's comment that, that is true, that it's, it's you know, I want to thank Supervisor Van Tassel for opening it up to public comment, which is not usually done. I know you're about to close it, because it's not done. Thank you. I did not have that. And you made your point clearly. And now it's over, so thank you. Yeah. Your point taken. Thank you. No, no, I, I said you made a, a clear point in your public comment. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> That's it. No. Thank you. Okay. And the inspections are done, so there is no question about that. Thank you. Very brief, Ethan. They'll be brief, but I just, I didn't come here to talk about this, but I felt like, uh, Well, the they'll, they'll be open comment. This is about this topic. No, that, I just wanted to say I think that Shakespeare is extraordinary, and that I think you should uh, issue this. Report. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Moving right along. Next on the agenda is to schedule any workshops or meetings. Um, we have the workshop scheduled for next Wednesday. Um, I just want to clarify one more time. Is that... Do you guys, because uh, Jeff didn't have a preference as to in-person or in, on Zoom. Let, so Let's see, when do we have to notice it? Are you guys comfortable meeting here in this form? Okay. Are you guys all comfortable? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, so then let's schedule it here. We could do a combined, I mean, this was our first run, and thank you, Cecile, for getting this together. This is our first ever combined. Um, we're hybrid, we're on Zoom and live, So, th and this is the first event. And I think we are functioning. So, how many thank people are on? Um, well, we it's been going back and forth. Right now, there's 35. There was 40 something at one point. Sorry, Judy. She keeps telling me to unmute her because we have it set so you can't just unmute yourself and start speaking. Uh, sorry, sorry. So, Judy, you're, are you uh, comfortable with the situation currently the way it is combined? So we can do. Um, I'd like to request another workshop. I think we well, talked well, about it last year about the ARPA funding and the accountants that we mentioned. Um, yes, I think it was um, discussed. I know Sue's, Sue is working on a lot of year-end stuff currently, but we will um, schedule that uh, hopefully for February. But uh, I will contact Sue tomorrow. I'll be here tomorrow, and we can talk that over. And maybe it could be at the end of January. So. But we, 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 are yeah, we are scheduled to meet every Wednesday. We are in the process of hiring a consulting firm 
to help us um, utilize and distribute our ARPA funds, we want to do it correctly. So, um, and the funds are used, can be used to pay for the consulting firm. Yeah, so, that's so it's a perfect use. So um, once we get a confirmation from them, and then we'll have them come in and do a uh, presentation at a workshop. So just, Thank you. Just to backtrack, at that workshop on January 12th also will be a food scrap presentation from Karen Ertle and Eric Brown. Very exciting. On that, yeah. And then we have the monthly meeting, which is scheduled for February 3rd. Okay. Unless anybody has any issues. Um, next on the agenda is the Code Enforcement Monthly Report. And this is for December 2021. Total fees collected, $24,326.69. There were 52 total permits issued, um, four additions, alterations, or repairs to residential buildings, 48 all other permits, including pools, sheds, decks, plumbing, HVAC, et cetera, um, 42 certificates of occupancy, um, one stop work order issued, and one inspection of commercial occupancy. And um, the building inspector would just like to remind everyone to check your batteries and everything with your smoke detector and CO detectors. I need to make one comment. Okay. Um, if you watch the news today, there was a tragic fire in Philadelphia where 12 people died in two apartments. Um, eight children, out of, eight, out of the 12, it was eight children. 18 people were living in one apartment. Four smoke detectors in those two apartments, none of them were functioning. So. I guarantee you we wouldn't even be talking about this fire if there were active smoke detectors. So the fireman in me is telling you to check your smoke detectors, make sure they work. New Year's is a good time. Check them constantly. I usually check them when I cook. I make a lot of smoke and they all go off. But, so I am just want to get that out there. Um, we don't need any tragedies. Next on the agenda is any other business that you guys might have. Anybody else have anything? Uh, just one thing, I'd like to give you a quick update on the Garrison Water District. As I indicated earlier on, we did drill a well. Oh, uh, sorry. A few, back in uh, November, we did drill a well, 960 feet. Un unfortunately, we did not get in enough water, so we decided not to move forward with that. But in the meantime, we've looked at a couple options. One of those options that looks pretty promising is we're looking to drill a new well across the street on 9D, which property which we own, the town owns right by on the other side of the uh right by the uh across the street from the the library so we were down there last week myself john van tassel ron gainer and a few other people so we're that's that's one possibility which looks pretty promising we also do look at a possibility of tapping into the water that we already have down at the down at the uh, rec center which we have abundant water of uh, but to get that water from the rec center to where we needed to is close to a mile and that was pretty exuberant amount of cost. So I don't think we'll be able to go to that option right now. But just want to give everybody an update on this. Also, I think I mentioned last month, we added another 5,000 gallons of storage down there. And since we've done that, we've had not any complaints of one, no one running out of water whatsoever. I think that and the, the fact that Dolly's isn't operating as much as it used to be with a lot of capacity has helped out our situation down there. That's it. Um, I would also like to comment. Thank you, Bob, for the work and the report. The, um, the thought of connecting to the rec center, I still think may be an option, although it's extremely expensive. So we're going to attempt, we're going to drill a well. We're waiting on engineers and permits to drill another well on the piece of property that Bobby had spoke about where the uh, community garden is currently. So the original Garrison Landing Water District water supply came from that piece of property, but it was a surface spring, which is no longer legal for a municipality to use a surface spring. So we're hoping that there's water there, but there is no guarantee. So no, the plan no. is at this point to drill, you know, we're still working on numbers, 400 feet, 500 feet. It's not cheap to drill a well, but we need to provide water for the Garrison Landing Water District. So we're gonna attempt another well on that side. The benefit of it is the piping that was used for the old system is still, still underground. Place, right? So we're hoping we can sleeve the pipe that's there because it's probably not you know, active yeah. anymore. Right. We're hoping we can sleeve what's there and supply water. We need a minimum of 10 to 12 okay. gallons a minute to keep the tank full and to sustain the water district. Like Bobby said, there, there's a, an abundance of water at the recreation center. The tower has 100,000 gallons of water in it. We have several wells that produce upwards of 30 to 40 gallons a minute. It's a functioning system. 
There is eight inch pipes in the Garrison Institute which they said they would allow us to hook to. We walked the road and if you've ever run the uh, castle to river, Danielle, I know you've done it, that, that's part of the track down there. But, <laughs> not you, Dave. <laughs> Sawyer, maybe. But it was a, um, an estimate to connect was close to $800,000 to pipe it. So there is benefits to it because it would be a large enough supply to put fire suppression, hydrants, it would be, you know, it would end it. But um, we're not looking to spend $800,000 to do this. So we're gonna explore the other option across the street and hopefully we'll get water. As Bobby said, we drilled 960 feet on the um, Highland Country Club on the fairway hoping we were going to get water we had a dowser come out i don't know how that works but whatever it this is where they said to drill we went 960 feet and it was less than a gallon a minute right you know we we got to 500 it's like okay just go a little deeper we have 800 feet of pipe on the truck let's go to 800 then it was we got another we went to 960 and still dry so it's just a hard area to get water to say the least so we will continue to work on it the, uh, we appreciate the patience of the residents but as bobby said we have a second tanker there now so we have two five thousand gallon tankers sitting there feeding the tank that's below ground where the water is treated and then goes into the system so well if i won the powerball last night i would have donated that million dollars that flight, but <laughs> unfortunately that, I didn't. that didn't happen sure. <laughs> i would have been nice of you Okay. Can I add one other? Certainly. Piece? So uh, one other piece of business. Um, in At the November Phillips Town Board meeting, the town board approved by oral resolution the creation of um, a new town advisory committee, the Phillips Town Trails Committee. Um, I just wanted to pass out uh, to the board, and I'll send it to you officially, the, the committee's founding documents. Um, Megan, here you go. Yep, and uh, and just to, to quickly read, it's it's a new advisory committee to the town of Phillipstown, uh, and the committee purpose, uh, the Phillipstown Trails Committee's purpose is to advise Phillipstown, New York, in its efforts to be a community where, in accordance with the principles of complete streets, which was a policy that the town of Phillipstown passed a year ago, people of all ages and abilities, regardless of whether they are traveling as drivers, pedestrians, bicyclists, or public transportation riders, can safely and easily move around the community and access work, access work, school, medical appointments, recreational opportunities, shopping, and other important local sites to, de to develop a healthier, more environmentally friendly and socially connected community for all. Uh, so that is the, the committee purpose. And the main things the Phillips Sound Trails Committee is working on right now is the um, Trails Committee, uh, through their efforts, helped the town of Phillipstown get a $40,000 feasibility grant last year, which was awarded by the Hudson River Valley Greenway. Um, and that feasibility grant is ongoing. And the purpose of that grant is to look at alternatives to build a biking and walking multi-purpose path that would connect Cold Spring uh, and Garrison. And so that feasibility study will be, uh, the Trails Committee thinks it will be done. Um, a consultant has been hired and reported back back to the board in July of 2022 in terms of what they found for the feasibility of that sort of a trail. Uh, and the other thing that they will be working on is they will uh, provide input to the town of Phillipstown on implementing the complete streets policy. So that is the new that is the new advisory committee. It's chaired by Rebecca Ramirez and Laura Bozzi. Uh, uh, I am now the town board representative to that committee, been, been a longtime member. It is a good fun group that puts on the bikes day. Uh, if anybody is interested in joining that group, it meets monthly on the third Tuesdays from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Happy yeah. to have this committee. Obviously, trails are a big part of Phillipstown, so uh, it's a big event for the town of Phillipstown. Um, and as I said that on New Year's Day, uh, if something we've learned from COVID is the healthier we are, the more likely we are to um, survive COVID. So we coined a new phrase called fittest town, and uh, I, I would like to be the fittest town in Putnam County, and it starts with the ability to have a place to move. So I appreciate that work. Thank you, Supervisor Van um, I would like to just add, you earlier at the beginning of the meeting, you alluded to it being January 6th, and I think what I learned from, um, you know, that horrific scene is that we all need to be 
kinder and more compassionate in our own communities because I think this is where we truly can come together and we have come together in Phillipstown and respect one another. So I just would urge, um, I know my, my um, resolution for the new year is kindness and compassion and I hope as a community we could show that to one another and continue to show it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Okay, anything yeah. else from the board? Meg, you got anything? No. Uh, my Come on, Meg. Great meeting, right. great first meeting. So <laughs> I'm sure I'll have a lot to say sure in will. the years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other business? Anything from the audience? Yes, Mayor Foley. Madam Mayor. Kathleen Foley from Village of Cold Spring. I came to ask a logistical question. Um, so these test kits that we got from the county today, yes. the communication that we received from the county is that they are intended for um, people who might not have the capacity to travel to the test site. Um, for people in congregant living situations, we don't currently have that in our village, um, or congregate settings like the senior center. Um, I have not, I believe that the senior center is not open. Um, I have asked the county whether any are being provided directly to the senior center and I haven't had a response on that yet. Um, they, you're right that some were provided to the churches and the other category was food pantries. Right. Um, so I have asked BES if they have provided in their allocation for um, the Church of the Open Door enough test kits to also supply the food pantry and if they haven't, they can come out of our supply. My very practical question, um, because this is wa Cold Spring, the village is walkable, in our village hall, we do not have a contact-free space to leave the test kits for people to pick up, and I'm wondering if we can piggyback on your contact-free location here at Town Hall and on our website, let folks know that they're walkable here at Town Hall. Absolutely. The door is open, um, and we're not IDing anybody, so the door will be open during hours. And again, please take, uh, you know, take one. There's two tests in each box, so... Um, Feel free to take one. And I will make a statement. I might regret it. But if there's anybody that needs one and has no transportation, I'm sure, um, as we did with the Food Town gift cards when COVID was really rampant, we will make arrangements to get them. But you better have a good reason why you didn't come here. So uh, that's. And I make that commitment as well in the village. But um, thank right. you for this walkable location. The other category that was listed, which I was signaling to you about, Danielle, was um, non governmental organizations. And that's not quite what the hub is. But would it be of service for you to have some on site? Uh, yeah, that would be great. Okay, so maybe we can connect after the meeting and you can take a chunk of the village piece. Okay, thanks. Thank I'll you. bring them to you. And also, we have a tax bill that we received for you today. So I'll bring that up at the same time. <laughs> Thank you. Your building inspector dropped a few off the other day, too. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Cash only. Um, I do have uh, Nicole Wooten has her hand up. Uh, Nicole, Nicole can you me? hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. I can. Yeah. Great. All right. Uh, thank you. I'm Nicole Wooten. I'm the director of natural resources at the Hudson Highlands Land Trust. I'll note our executive director, Katrina Schindeldecker, is on the call as well. Uh, so I want to say Happy New Year and thank you to the many of you who joined our workshop on December 1st to discuss the funding feasibility study for Phillipstown. So this was the result of the town requesting technical assistance from the Trust for Public Land in collaboration with Hudson Highlands Land Trust to explore potential options for dedicated sustainable sources of funding available to support natural resources and water protection as well as recreational walkable connections within the town. And it was funded in part by a grant from the New York State Environmental Protection Fund through the Hudson River Estuary Program of DEC. So during that meeting, town board members requested time to review the rather lengthy funding feasibility study and to have a follow-up discussion in early January so we could talk about the next steps, including conducting a community survey. Um, so I wanted to ask you all when a good time might be for that follow-up discussion, and I'm happy to follow up with you all in an email um, to identify that time. Um, Nicole, I did reach out to Katrina um, during the month of December after that meeting. I have not connected with her yet, but um, I, I think it would still be tough for all of us to get caught up in January. Can we schedule something in early February, maybe have a small meeting here uh, with myself or Bobby and uh, go over some of the uh, the options. 
Sure. Um, I'll check in with the Trust for Public Land and see if that works with their schedule as far as the surveying goes. Okay. And then we'll we'll start the process uh, in earnest in February. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see any other hands up. So. Anybody else here? No. Okay. Vacancies. Um, we haven't had any vacancies in a while. I know there is somebody considering the, um, the ZBA, um, and we do have a few resumes for the Conservation Board, so we should schedule some interviews for the Conservation Board. I, we have not gotten a resume for the ZBA yet, but we do have resumes for the Conservation Board. Tara, can you reach out to them and we'll... I've only received one resume, so if you received another, can you forward it to me? Yeah. I received the first one, I think, that you forwarded, but I don't... So okay. why don't we schedule um, some interviews the uh, on a Wednesday in January? Okay. So let's. you want to shoot towards the end of the month, what would it be, the 12th and then, or the 19th? Do you want to set it up for the 19th? Judy, I, didn't you have a conflict for the 19th? Me? Yes. yes. Yeah. No. No, uh, I don't. Oh, it was Karen, Karen then that couldn't come. Okay, so let's schedule interviews for the nineteenth, tentatively, okay. pending the applicant's ability to to come. What time do you want to start those? It's only two people, so we could do it at seven thirty normal time. Yep. And if we and maybe if we get the ZBA resume in the meantime, we can do that one as well. So, but I'll reach out to that person. So. Well, maybe one of those two other. Per persons may be interested in the CBA as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can, okay. we can co interview. Co interview. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, approval of vouchers. General. So moved. Second. Second. Well, all in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Highway. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Continental Village Park District. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Continental Village Water District. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And aye. I vote aye. Motion to adjourn. So, so moved. moved. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good Second. night. Thank you all. Second. Second. <laughs> Stay safe in the aye. snow tonight.